you know her from um, All My Children, from Days of Our Lives, and now on Netflix, Selling Sunset, we have Chriselle Staus with us. Hello. Hello. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. I had to teach them a couple of them, like, when we're not shooting, you're still mic'd. Like your audio is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So don't don't talk don't talk crap about the producers because they yeah. can hear you. The producers afterwards came up to me and he was like, "Chriselle, don't what? Know. Oh, we want to know yeah. that stuff." Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. With scripted television, it's very um, safe. It's a safe environment because it's rehearsed and you you're playing a character. And with unscripted, I mean, if people hate who you're playing they hate you <laughs> <laughs> right yeah oh, right gosh, right there's no right. there's no saying i'm just an actor folks right, right. well because then you're well, also using your name it's not like you're yeah. you, it's not like no i just play you know so and so no you're actually using your name that's tough yeah so there's there's always an uncomfortability when when you're putting your ideas and your opinions out there and you're attached to them as opposed to oh my god my character is in the loony bin and she's crazy you know well right. and also like you if you mess up on a on on a soap, it's like oh they don't want you to mess up. But right. in unscripted, they probably do want you to mess up. A hundred percent. Right. So like, so you have to be yeah you have to be super cautious, right? Because yeah. they'll put your worst up there. You got to be oh, on your game yeah. for Wait, sure. That's going to be what's on the trailer to get people. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> we're totally. going to lead with that. You're, yeah, you're, totally. you're, yeah, your worst moment, we're going to lead with that. Thanks. Thanks so much for yeah, that. I, I just remember it from a very small age watching soap operas and it being the opposite of what I was living in this very poor rural town and looking at these glamorous, you know, women on TV. So, so, uh, is, so soaps and like soaps specifically were what you set your eyes on in a way? Oh, a hundred percent. Even when I went to college, I told them uh, from day one, when I started the theater uh, company in the group, he yeah. tells a story that I told him from day one, I want to be on a soap opera. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. amazing. I so what, exactly what kind of outlets, were there outlets for you in your small town to kind of experience like performing or, or like? Not really. I did like high school plays and I did church plays. Um, I, you know, I, I really, the first time I got to really perform, I feel like in front of people that weren't like my aunt or something was sure, uh, in college. Right. <laughs> so, oh, so, but at the end of high school, you're like, I, I'm going to go to college for this because this is, ex so, but that's interesting because like someone that didn't have a lot of outlets or a lot of experience might say, oh, I should just move to LA and, and like just pack my car and move to LA. But you knew to go, you knew to, you wanted to study, you wanted to go to a theater program that, yeah, how did, and you picked, you picked a school in Kentucky, yeah? I did, uh, money wise, I didn't really have a choice cause I, I, if I stayed in state, I, it was so much cheaper. And sure. so it was one of those things where I knew I had a lot to learn. So I, I needed to figure it out. And I certainly wouldn't have ever booked all my children if I hadn't gone the way of college everyone else everyone is different that was just the path for me sure, sure yeah um and so i yeah i went i went there with the goal in mind and i, I being from kentucky i used to talk like this so oh. i had to lose my accent yeah, that's amazing yeah <laughs> um and so i realized in college i started mimicking actually in high school i started mimicking the newscasters because i knew I had this dream in my head. I wanted to be on TV and no one on TV sound a lot me. So uh, that's a, that's so funny. I had to like slowly lose my accent. And I got braces in college, which as a freshman in college is really not like the cool thing to do, but I <laughs> was set on my dream. So. Yeah. And Invisalign awesome. hadn't come around just yet. It hadn't. You know, <laughs> no, but no. you know what it was? You remember those God awful clear braces and then everything gets stuck in them and they're sure worse than metal braces <laughs> yeah. right but they're, they're they fit your teeth like the metal braces but they're just clear right they're clear and then they like turn yellow almost uh-huh yeah not good dude. <laughs> not, good. <laughs> not good not good oh, so man. so you knew you liked it in college but did so you went there four four years uh yeah four yeah, years I went at there, uh actually 4.5 i graduated okay, great. in december <laughs> that's okay nice. i never went well you so wanted to just whatever. soak it all up make sure you got it all Right. That's right. Yeah, I didn't want right. to, you know, get too wrapped up and, and it go by too quickly. So. <laughs> yeah. And Amazing. then, and then w what was the move after that? Did someone guide you and say, Hey, maybe you should go here or do this, or here's an agent or manager or. So after college, I see, I graduated in December and then I moved to Los Angeles in, 
I believe February. Um, so I was auditioning in LA for a year. So uh, to your question, let me remember. I, I had an agent, but how did I get her? Oh, I remember. I don't really recommend this, but I did this like <laughs> class called TV line or something. No, not TV line. Oh God. Uh, I forget. So I don't recommend it. So it's good. I don't remember. It was what one it was. of those programs where you pay and they're talent scouting and yes. Yes. blah, blah, blah. So yes. For the most part, you're just paying and these casting directors are just coming in and they're just taking your money. But every once in a while, yeah. and I got to be one of the exceptions, but that's why I don't want to say that because I know for the most part, they were taking people's money and just. Well, sure. I think that's illegal now, right? Like it I, is. Yeah, yeah, so I, I'm sure it happens in some They're ways They're still out now. there, though. They're still out and there. And I think because I just got lucky that this manager happened to be there that day, and, and um, their success rate of someone doing that, I, that's why I wouldn't recommend anyone get it. Sure. But you're right. You can't even do that anymore. But I, yeah. So I got my manager in a little bit of a shysty way. He was <laughs> collecting a check at one of those things. But, right. Um, but it worked out. But it worked out. Okay, great. <laughs> so right. that, yeah. But yeah, so I ended up getting a, a, an agent who sent me an audition for, now granted, for the year I was in LA when I moved there, I got a bunch of different auditions for like commercials and I didn't get any of them. I got down, I got close to a couple things and I sure. kept missing out. I would get really nervous in the room and my hands would shake and my voice would tremble. Aww. And so when I got this audition for, am I rambling? Is that, did you want to no, hear this no, it's, I asked no, you the question. The, I want to hear the answer, point. Rochelle. Okay, okay. It's so funny how many people come on podcasts and like, am I talking too much? I'm like, that's, okay. no, that's what we do. We talk. <laughs> You're, good. Sure. You're good. If uh, so, I got the audition for all my children. Now, now remember, this is my dream job. Right. I've of been course. For a year now, and I haven't even booked so much as a commercial where I'm like the girl in the back, like going like this. Like right. I haven't booked mm -hmm. anything, and right. this is a four-year contract gig on all my children and you would move to new york city of all places. right crazy so in fact i wasn't nervous because i just knew this wasn't going to be the first thing that i booked right so oh. it's so weird but i was flown to new york and i was like just this is a free trip to new york you're <laughs> happy so you, to be here did you do a pre-read in la i did it yeah so i auditioned and i did a call back in la Okay, and I was gonna. Then, okay. All of a sudden, I got a call that I'm being flown to New York to screen test. I think alongside five or six other girls for this wow. part. And so I just, you know, and they didn't tell me the character. Um, and a lot of times in soaps, you don't know who you're auditioning for. Right. Um, so I didn't know who it was for, and there wasn't a lot of information. It was Sydney Fox at the time. Sydney uh, Fox. Yeah. That's amazing. That's an incredible daytime character name. I know, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, tr I wasn't nervous because in, I just knew that this wouldn't, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be sad about something. I wanted to wow. know that I w it was a, an accomplishment being there. I was proud of myself. That I made it that far and I knew I wasn't going to get it. So don't even be nervous. That's and a great attitude. It was the first time in my life that I was able to, you know, really, just kind of be in the moment and have fun because every time before that I got in my head and I'm, I'm not kidding. The papers, my hands would be shaking. Well, that, that's yeah. a, that says a lot though. Cause I, you know, like these things that you're talking about, those moments are, are what I try to teach my son. Such a, that's such a huge mental win, right? To be able to, to, to be that way in the biggest moment of your life at the time for a job that says a lot mentally about you, you know, and that's, I mean, it's a, it is a big deal. I always try to point those things out with my son. I'm like, Hey man, you overcame that. And you, you performed in that, you know, in that specific moment. And that's a big deal. So anyway, well, and that's so that's, funny. That's huge. You know, it sounds like you were, you were kind of creating that mindset out of like to protect yourself from disappointment, but did you know, yeah. did you know in any way that that would be the best energy to come in with? Do you know what I'm saying? Did you know, like it would be so practically useful for you as well? Not, not just like self-preservation. I didn't because to think what you're saying, I would have had to have given right. myself that uh, thought process that I got the job. And I just, it would have just been too crushing in that moment to process that. Sure. So I just truly hadn't even thought that far through. I just really wanted to like let myself be proud in that moment 
that I beat out all those girls. Cause I remember the audition and the callback. I mean, there were so many people there. To and, make it that far is an accomplishment, yeah. Yeah, and so I just, um, I, I wouldn't even let my, it was a self-protection mode, but I wouldn't, I wanted it so bad, but I just wouldn't let myself like, like go there as far as like, this is, because I did in every other audition, this is your part, this is supposed to be you, you, I, this is made for right. me, like, of course I can do this. I was like, right. nope. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so. Part, just have fun. <laughs> And, and when you moved from college, you chose LA over New York or was there ever, a, was there ever a thought about going to New York rather than LA? No, because being from Kentucky, I feel like LA is a little more, you know, there's space and you can have a dog and it's a little more relaxed. I see, New okay. York was a little scary to me. Sure. And if I hadn't moved to New York with a job on TV like that, yeah. I, I wouldn't have ever been brave enough to make that move. Um, but having done it in the way that I did, it was the five of my favorite years I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to go there without a job and to go there without financial I, security, I yeah. would have never been able to sure. do that. So what was the call like when you got the call? Oh my God. Um, I freaked out. I started jumping up and down on the bed, screaming, um, crying. <laughs> um, so did you was, find out, did you find out when you went back to LA or in New York? I Why found out when I went back to LA, it, it was a, um, a holiday weekend. So they told me that I'd find out on Tuesday oh. and I got a call on Friday oh. saying that I got the job. And I was like, but I, I thought they were tricking me because they told me I wouldn't know till Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was a little initially mad at them because I'm like, that isn't funny, you know? And they were like, <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we're not, we're not kidding with you. We wouldn't do that. You got the job. And then I flipped out. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> that, that's so fun. And then you had the weekend to really, just really enjoy it. Yeah. I did. Um, and so, I mean, does, did you call everyone in the state of Kentucky? Like everybody, I, <laughs> I, everybody in her town, five people. Oh yeah, so it didn't God. take the call. This wasn't too long, but still. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. She's crying, so she wants to say hi. Hey, oh what's up, God. dog? <laughs> hey, oh is my that, gosh, is that what Toto? Kind of, what kind of hair is that? She's getting a bath today. Sorry, she's a little yeah. scruffy. So um, is that a amazing, is that a like, Westie? She's like a little, um, I think terrier mix of some yeah. sort. Yeah, but it's amazing like, when you picked when you picked her up. I expected her hair to move in yeah, some yeah. way and it and it didn't like uh, is there hair there's like, hairspray in there there's residual hairspray from Chrishell <laughs> yeah, that goes right down to the dog the yeah. dog's a day the dog's a daytime fan too <laughs> <laughs> totally. yes i just need a fan for us and our hair <laughs> no kidding me too <laughs> so and how long after like was it like you start next week or we're starting in a couple months or how long how long did it take I you to get involved i had like two weeks uh to sell my car and pack my bag and you know right. i didn't have much so it was like the sure perfect through some jeans and a magazine and a suitcase. I was like, I'm ready. <laughs> that's awesome. In New York, yeah, that's that's a big transition for someone that, you know, started small town like you did and then LA's not a city. So that's, it's a real transition. It, oh yeah, like, it was for sure. It was for sure. And also, um, I was in the, just little things, like walking down the street and I would just used to smiling and waving at people and in New York <laughs> City, are you kidding? Like people right. just do not do that. And I didn't learn that in LA because everyone was in a car. Right, so in, you don't see people in yeah. When you pass someone on the street, you always wave and smile and say hi. And so that was just one of the first funny things I learned. I learned what I was attracting by doing that and I quickly learned to quit doing that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Don't yeah. be too friendly. A lot, of, yeah. a lot of construction sites where you were like, oh, I hey. shouldn't do yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Head you down. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. So how, how, lo how long was your run on All My Children? I was on the show almost seven years. Wow, that's a good God, run. And that was a great time. Like, I, I know I said that I, I maybe met you in music, but I'm, I know, but we used to hang out. Like, our shows used to hang out, and it used to be fun. I it used to be so fun. I was thinking of, I, do you remember that summer where we went, like, um, we were in Wisconsin? Do you remember that music yes. festival in Wisconsin? Yes. What was and, it? Um, Stagecoach or something? What were you guys well, doing? Fun in the Sun um, or something? I, I, I don't know what they called it, but it was SoapNet. Yeah. Like, it was something like Stagecoach if it wasn't Stagecoach. Yeah, so in Stagecoach, we, we did an Indio, and I, I, because I, I, I'm not sure if you're in Wisconsin, but I know I saw you at Stagecoach out in Indio, and like we just yeah. used to do all these 
fun things. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and you know, the Broadway cares event that we used to do. And then it's funny. I, I was looking for your email and I found it in a chain from the, uh, that show we did uh, that, that show the, at the, the, um, the gay and lesbian center in LA. And I feel like you were supposed to be in it and then dropped out. Oh my God, you're right. Yes, I forgot about this. I was actually super excited about that, but um, I ended up getting diagnosed with vocal cord nodules. That's right. Um, so yeah, it was, I don't know, 2008, 2009, wow. or somewhere in there, and we did a production of Candor and Ebbs, The World Goes Round in LA, and ABC Daytime collaborated um, on it, and it was, so it was me and Brandon Barash, and initially it was Chriselle, Natalie Hall, mm -hmm. and then Bobby Eeks. Mm -hmm. And then when you left, they brought in Jamie Lunar. Oh, interesting. So, cause she um, was on, she was on all my children, wasn't she? Or yeah, one life. Played, uh, not Colby. Um, yeah. Yes. She was on the show. She Sorry. was on all my children. Yeah. All yeah so, I know, <laughs> but it was so weird to me. Cause I was like, I, I remember doing that show, but I, I don't remember Chriselle being in it, but here's her email. <laughs> and then I remembered, I remembered, I think you were supposed to be in it and then couldn't. So um, yeah. anyway, but that was a really just a lovely, you know, uh, obviously you were, you were new to all my children. I was new to general hospital and, but it, you know, it was, it was a it's bit like of a like, special time, I feel yeah. like, you know, and there was a bond between like all the ABC daytime yeah. people. I love that time. Our casino nights. Remember they would have, yeah, that was fun. And the parties yeah. after the Emmys, like we would all just like be, it was just a real camar camaraderie that For sure. I, yeah. I hate that is gone now, you know, it's, know, it was special when we were in, I feel like in that time. Yeah. Yeah. You sure. know, like I, I, you know, Steve went over to YNR and I know you did a little spell on YNR for like, or like a summer or something. Like right? episodes, I think, yeah. But, yeah. And so, I've, you know, now that the ABC daytime family has gone, I've always been kind of a little jealous of the CBS family. Cause maybe that they have a little bit of that right. And they're in the same yeah. building. And it yeah. was just, it was fun to be on a team. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now it's just me and you, Bradford. Yeah, I know. Our team is very small, but I'm still very lucky to, to be a part That's of a it. team. Um, so we can't well, feel the, we can't like feel the softball team. Of a, we're still part of it. It's almost like college and you're like alumni. Like, I feel yeah, like totally. Even if I you know, don't know someone personally, like I haven't worked with you personally, Steve, but I, it's like, I do feel like it's like, you know, I've known you for years. Yeah, even though absolutely. You, so. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. For yeah. Definitely. Definitely. There is that feeling amongst daytime. For sure. Daytime people, for sure. So when, when the, when the hammer came down on those two shows in New York, um, what did you immediately move back to LA or what, what was the plan after that? Well, all my children first moved oh, right. to LA. To LA. That's right. Yeah. They tried to. On the show till it ended. So I think it was in LA a little over a year once it moved. Um, so interestingly enough, I had decided not to renew my contract. Now I was moving to LA to go. Uh pursue pilot season and then ran and they and like they I saw the line of girls that was auditioning for my part it was so surreal to yeah. see that because you you know it was very obvious um sure and then <laughs> the show came out saying it was moving so it ended up being kind of cool that so I you didn't you didn't leave or you did did you leave on the same schedule or you're like oh well I guess I'll stay they would no joke they moved over that Christmas break when I was going to be moving anyway so wow. it was bizarre timing so um, all those girls in line, you dashed their hopes. I know. I'm so sorry, girls. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. <laughs> um, okay, it's a real, so it's you, a real estate business. It's cutthroat. Don't be sorry. Yeah, don't right? be sorry. Yeah. So, but then you stayed until the second, or until yes. It, it, yes, yeah, yeah, until the bitter end. I think.